Last week was manic in the stock market. We had both the best and worst day for the S&P 500 in 2024. And we can see some very mixed results right across the board. Now today our focus is on Dell Technologies, which just over the last month is down nearly 40%. And we are sitting on a company that has a triple buy rating and a very, very rare strong buy from Quant, as we can see, 4.87 out of 5. Now we're going to do an in-depth look to see whether or not this is a company we need to consider and a quick spoiler alert, there is massive upside, one of the most we have ever seen for any company we have reviewed. Now first thing before we take a look at this, we want to just run through the underlying metrics of this essentially technology hardware company and first thing to note their dividend safety score does sit at 70 and their growth is very promising double digit 20% in fact in March this year. Now what does a safe score mean? Well firstly it was reaffirmed in June so just a few months ago but ultimately that a dividend cut for this company is unlikely. In terms of the key recessionary metrics well in the recession 0709 they had negative 19% sales which was below the average growth. S&P at that point had around negative 12%. As we mentioned, a very nice increase in March. We do want to highlight they just have started to pay dividends, and that is why we see one year of consecutive increases, although they did offer a dividend in 2013, and we can see that was cut pretty much the year after. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, it is one thing we do look on this channel. It tells us a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average. So just based off on dividend yield theory, we have an overvaluation signal. But we do note the forward P at 11.1 does sit near the five-year rolling of 9.2 and in fact sits significantly lower than the information technology of 25.1. So a few undervaluation as well as one overvaluation signal, but as always we will conclude towards the end of the episode. Free cash flow power as always below 60%, that is what we want to see here. Companies then will give us that faith, they can offer double digit increases. And in 2024, 18%, no surprise why we got that very rapid increase. Over the next 12 months, even though it is anticipated to increase to 25%, that gives us faith that Dell Technologies will be able to continue to rapidly increase that dividend, which is what we love to see as investors. Next thing to point out is the free cash flow per share. As always, consistent increases over the longer term. Now, we're going to point out that this is what you could argue a fairly cyclical stock. That is why we do get some very large movements year on year. It has increased from 2015 to 2024, but as we said, a lot of inconsistency and over the next 12 months anticipated to drop to around 715. Again, cyclicality showing through their numbers, four of the last 10 years have been negative growth and ultimately we see that in the more recent year of 2024. And when we do zoom out to look at it, we can in fact note whilst it has increased from 54 billion to 88, a lot of peaks, a lot of troughs going up and going down rapidly on a year on year perspective. And one thing we love, companies that return excess cash to investor pockets through those share buybacks, we actually notice the opposite effect. Dell Technologies as a whole would have diluted your position as a shareholder from 2015 to 2024. ROIC, one of our favorite metrics, return on invested capital, 10% or more, give us faith, management are able to effectively allocate their capital. Now we note over the last four years, it is around that level, in fact, increasing from the low of 2019 at 0%. So it is a good sign. We are getting some consistent increases and ultimately 23% in the more recent year is a very attractive number for potential investors, as well as those who do consider adding this to their portfolio. In terms of operating margin, above 12 is what we want to see. This is where we do ultimately believe that this company does lack very low margins. Granted, it has increased 7% in 2024, but we want to see this continue to increase at a much rapid rate, at a minimum 12%, as we mentioned. Free cash flow margin, very, very inconsistent, 7% in 2024. And what we would ultimately say about the inconsistencies here is that we want to be using this in our valuation model to understand whether or not that MOS is sufficient for us to execute. Ultimately, another very important metric, the net debt to EBITDA, the earnings before the interest tax depreciation amortization. Why we say this is a very important? Well, it correlates to both dividend safety, but more importantly, the balance sheet strength. 
Below three is what we want to see as the preference. 1.15. Now, remember, these are the number of years that are indicative of paying all of their debt net of cash on hand. 1.15 looking very good around that over the next 12 months. So the balance sheet does look safe with that very low free cash flow power as well. The dividend does look to be secure. Now, let's just go back and look at the historical performance. As we said, a triple buy rating. It is now trading in the mid to low end of the 52 week range with the yield creeping towards that 2% level and the forward P, as we already said, very low, not just at the 11.95, but also in comparison to the sector median as well. Now, year to date, the company is still up around 21%. Over the last year, very strong performance, up 64%. And when you zoom out to over the last five years, incredible up 262%, massively outperforming the S&P. And that is without even including those dividends reinvested. So what we want to point out here is this is a company that looks to be very undervalued, a lot of very good signals that we are seeing. So let's continue moving forwards with our analysis. Now, a few things that we do like to do. First one is insider and institutional movement. So insider ownership, 47%. So we note around 2 billion worth of sales by these insiders in the management team over the last year. And we can actually note in quarter three of 152 million, it isn't maybe something as consistent as we see in other companies on a quarter on quarter basis. So it is very rare that we do see management do massive amounts of sales. In fact, the largest ones have come this year in 2024, 956 million in Q1, 843 in Q2, and the smaller amount of 152 in quarter three. Now, who are these insiders? How much are they selling? And what we notice here is a significant amount of insider selling in the month of July. The largest one here, as we can see here, 1 million worth of shares for around 145 million. Now, we do show this. We like to be transparent even with the sales. But the main thing that we do want to highlight right now is that insider selling is never really a bearish signal. They sell for many reasons, whether that's financial or personal. The flip side to this is looking at the institutional ownership, which sits at 38%, around 4.3 billion worth of sales over the last year. We see a little bit more worth of buys over the same time period as well. And more importantly, in the more recent quarter, we actually notice more selling than buying. We do go back though the previous quarter, so Q1 of 2024, we see the opposite effect. So ultimately, we can say that institutions marginally buying more over the last year, but in the more recent quarter, they are selling a little bit more. Main thing to understand, institutions, insiders, or any other investors, always do your own due diligence and never rely on what they do. It is just one level of the analysis that we do on this channel. We also want to note this morning we have released our latest free weekly article where we talk about some undervalued dividend kings as well as discussing the Japanese carry trade for those that are interested. As always, they are completely free. You can grab a copy by clicking on the pinned comment below. And we've also released our 35 undervalued stocks for the month of August, where we also take a look at those that are in our own portfolios. As always, click on the pinned comment below where you can sign up and read straight away. We then want to just quickly run through the income statement. Now, we already looked at the top line revenue. We can see a little bit inconsistent. Granted, over the long term, it has been moving in the right direction. But this part of the analysis, we want to specify the bottom line what is the story to be told and quite an interesting one to know in fact from 2015 all the way to 2019 they were loss making and that profit started from 2020 at 4.6 billion and we can in fact see it is lower in 2024 at 3.2 so graphically it is very inconsistent and unfortunately we cannot see a trend on the bottom line whilst the top line we did see growth over the long term bottom line very inconsistent just nice to report they have started to turn a profit from 2020. We also want to do the same sort of analysis, but on the balance sheet, looking at the health of this company, their total cash versus their total debt. And what we can see, 5.4 billion of cash on 2015 sitting on their balance sheet, around 6.1 in their latest report. So it has been increasing over the longer term, a little bit inconsistent too. Nonetheless, as always, this number tells us nothing on its own, which is why we compare it to their total debt numerically and directionally. And what we can see in today's episode, it has been increasing and was already fairly high in comparison to their cash, 14.2 billion and now sitting around 26.3. So over the longer term, again, we do note the inconsistencies, but their total debt has been increasing. It is larger than their cash position as well. But when we looked at the net debt to EBITDA, that did look fairly healthy, but something to maybe keep on your radar. 
Now, we want to see their earnings. How well have they performed? What are their future projections? And over the last four quarters, we actually note they've beaten three of the last four. So a 75% track record. With their next quarter, which they are releasing this month, expected negative 3% year on year decrease to the EPS. Although the next three, we see some nice double digit growth. And if we look out to January 2026, if they hit their earnings per share estimates, that forward P will come down to around 9.9, .9, which maybe you are starting to think does look fairly attractive. Just at a high level, though, with their earnings that they did release in May, we can see that their shares on a top line did fall despite what they say as a growing AI business. And they have become a top vendor for AI oriented servers, which they do believe is in high demand as companies are looking to invest a significant amount in infrastructures for that generative AI. And remember, that is something that we have seen from articles, Bloomberg and others that they anticipate to grow at around 30 to 45 percent on a year on year basis. Now, we did also want to point out the numbers, which is a little bit contradictory to Seeking Alpha, where in fact, they do look like they had a double beat, both on the earnings per share at around one cent growth and on the revenue as well. There was a very nice growth. So something just to bear in mind. Nonetheless, the numbers moving forwards overall do look fairly strong. Now, let's take a look at some of the gradings and underlying metrics. First one is valuation. Now, they get a C, maybe not something I particularly agree with, because when we do look at the P on a non-GAAP basis, it sits at around 12, sector at around 23. So right now, this means and translates, in fact, to around a 48% discount that you are getting for Dell Technologies if you buy today. Do remember, though, sometimes it's warranted that companies do trade at a discount. Maybe they lack in other metrics, but ultimately, they are getting some very strong gradings no matter where you look, which tells us right now, Dell is trading at essentially a discount, whichever valuation method you look at to the sector median. We then draw your attention to the growth grade where they get an A, which is interesting because a revenue on a year on year basis, negative 8% with the sector around 3.2. Moving forwards, very minimal growth around 1% with the sector at 6.93%. And the other thing that we do draw your attention to as we can see the earnings per share anticipated over the next three to five years to grow at 12%, which does come in slightly under than the sector of 14.5. So you could argue the valuation and growth grade should maybe be swapped around as an A and a C. The next grading or final we should say is the Dell profitability grade where they get an A+. We see the gross profit margin fairly low, in fact, 23%, sector median around 50%. Bottom line as well, marginally higher, 4% versus the 3.58 sector medium. And one thing we always like to draw your attention to, cash from operations just under 8 billion with the sector median at 99 million. So a quick recap then, we do get a triple buy with a very rare strong buy from Quant, a C on valuation, A on growth with an A plus on profitability. Now, how does that compare to against their return others in the sector as a whole? Are there any trends that we can identify? So we've got others in the technology hardware. We've got some very popular names here, including super microcomputers that we have reviewed just a few days ago. Now, over the last year, total return, including dividends reinvested, Dell Technologies has been the second best performing up 66%. When we zoom out over the last five years, again, we can see something very similar, although it does seem to be largely overshadowed by the massive return that you would have got from SMCI. Nonetheless, whether or not you believe this is a great return, bear in mind that the past performance isn't an indicator of future. And as always, for transparency, we do just want to show you that when we do look at it versus the S&P, Dell Technologies over the last year has outperformed. Over the last five years as well, we can see the same thing. Now, we just normally show this part to tell you that if you don't believe that Dell will continue to outperform, maybe a low-cost ETF could be a great alternative. But look, over the last five years, it has outperformed significantly. Maybe you have that confidence that they will be able to continually. We then move on to the valuation model. As always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, our intrinsic value of $141. How we got through this? Well, we do run it through the four models. Graham's valuation, where we have the ticker symbol, the EPS, the long-term growth rate, and AAA corporate bond yield, which tells us the intrinsic value at around $129 gives us our first undervaluation signal, given the market value sits at $93. As always, though, we're not looking at any one of these models in isolation. We then put through the multiples valuation, those companies we analyze similar sector and size, their average P multiplied by the EPS of Dell to get another undervaluation signal, two for two. 
And then we get on to the dividend discount. Now, granted, they've just restarted that dividend not too long ago. So with a very nice average growth, we've been a lot more conservative at 6.75, which does give us that third undervaluation signal. We then move on to the DCF model where we have the free cash flow year on year. Average growth, 125%. We've wanted to be a lot more conservative at that 6% level. With the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value, where we add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding, and as we can see here, a 4 for 4 undervaluation right across the board. So in terms of the intrinsic value at 141, we will run it through the margin of safety, but we do want to highlight, probably already caught your attention, Wall Street do see this as a massive upside, 70% over the next year. Bear in mind as well, for those that do love dividends, growth has been good over the last two years, and in fact, the yield at 2% may be something that you could work with. So as we mentioned, margin of safety is something we always do on this channel, and we start off at 10% and execute on that if it meets our three golden criteria, wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. If you believe that, well, at 10%, a buy at 127, and then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. At 20%, you're getting $113 as the buy price. At 30%, $99, so still quite some nice MOS. At 35%, not too far off, around a dollar shy. So in today's episode for Dell Technologies, you are getting 35% MOS with 70% upside from Wall Street. Now, a few thoughts that we have. This isn't one that right now we are looking to add to the portfolio. As we did look through the underlying metrics, there were some issues that we had. I mean, first, you have to bear in mind the cyclicality of the industry as a whole. Their margins were fairly low. And we did note that out of the last 10 years, five of those years, they were not making a profit. So maybe one that we could get interested in over the next few years if we see some consistency in their numbers. But that is just something to bear in mind when you're looking at your overall investment thesis. As always, though, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below whether this is one you're looking to buy. Maybe, in fact, it is on the watch list to get it to a little bit lower MOS. Or maybe, in fact, 35% does look fairly attractive. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter where you can read the one we did just drop today. And also come and join us in the Patreon where we do talk about our weekly buy and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.